How are you feeling, lad? <laughs> I haven't quite found your sea legs, have you? <laughs> Don't worry. We're almost at Isla Hoven. You'll be back on dry land before you know it. Hmm? You want to know more about Isla Hoven, do you? <laughs> uh, well, I can understand why. A tiny private island in the middle of the South Pacific would make an interesting headliner for your blog. I sure hope you brought a pen and paper, though. Electronics don't work on or around that island. That's why the only way to get there is with some good old-fashioned sailing. Ah, that's right, lad. There's something around that island that just causes the electronics to act up. Planes can't fly over it and speedboats can't approach it. No, what you need is a sailing boat like this one. Sure, it takes a little longer, and finding the island itself is a bit difficult. But when you've been doing this as long as I have, you can find that place blindfolded in a hurricane. How long have I been sailing to this island? Oh, many years now. Doc Bishop and I have an understanding, you see. She pays well, and I bring her guests to her island. Uh, you want to know more about the doc? Uh, well, she's not exactly what you would call a people person. Though I suppose that was pretty obvious, considering she lives alone on her island. Oh, yeah, nobody lives on that island other than Doc Bishop. Been that way for as long as I've known her. She grows her own food on that island, so she doesn't really need to do anything from, or get anything from the outside world. Ugh. And taxes are no problem from her due to her family's wealth. Honestly, it seems like she's content living a peaceful, solitary life. But when you gain a reputation as a doctor who can cure even the deadliest of, of diseases, you should expect people to get even a little bit curious. I think that's why she's asked you to come to her island. How did she hear of your blog if she has no electronics? <laughs> well, I suppose that's my fault. Whenever I'm on the mainland, your blog is what I spend most of my time reading. I think it's quite impressive, the way you travel the world and interview society's most influential members. You remind us that most of them came from humble beginnings, and that they're just people like everyone else. Though, uh, I don't think the Doc will be like anyone else you've ever spoken to before. You'll find out for yourself, lad. We're here. Afternoon, Doc. You're looking gorgeous, as always. Captain Shaw. Always a pleasure. And this must be the blogger you've told me so much about. Aye, that, that he is. Lad, may I present Dr. Alessandra Bishop? Welcome to Isla Hoven. I do hope the seas treated you well on your journey here. <laughs> yes, you seem the type to prefer flying to sailing. Unfortunately, planes are not permitted to fly near my island. The last thing I need is their equipment to fail and cause a crash. <clears throat> well, if there's nothing else you need from me, Doc, then I'll just be heading out. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon for you, lad. Enjoy your stay. Oh, no, lad, I ain't staying. Part of my understanding with the dock, you see. The boat only comes once a day, weather permitting. Don't worry, lad, I'll see you tomorrow. Good seeing you two again, Doc. Have a nice night.
If you'll grab your bag, I'll take you to the guest room. Hmm. Oh, you like my house? Yes, while the island has been in my family for generations, the house itself is relatively new. I do enjoy how it sits on the hill overlooking the sea. Such a gorgeous sight to awaken to. Please, save the rest of your questions for the interview. For now, let's get you settled in bed. We'll have plenty of time to talk later. Did you enjoy your meal? Good. The vegetables were picked fresh this morning, and the chicken came from my very own coop. Oh, well, you are very welcome for the meal, but I doubt my cooking is what brought you to this island. Why don't we head to my study, and then we can finally get this interview out of the way. Please, make yourself comfortable, sir. Now then, what would you like to know? Yes, I was born and raised on this island by my mother, just as she had been raised by her mother before her, and so on and so forth. No, my father was never really in the picture. The women in my family seem to have a thing for sailors who flee with the morning tide the second they hear about a baby on the way. <sighs> Such is life, I suppose. I can't really complain. I had a wonderful childhood and the best education money could buy. When I came of age, I was sent to the mainland for private schooling. After that, I went on to college to earn my multiple degrees and when my mother passed away, I took over the care of this island. Why did I become a doctor? All the women in my family are doctors, you see. It's how the bishop name has amassed such a fortune over the years. It is the only life I had ever seen for myself. Besides, isn't helping others a good thing? Yes, I had a feeling my miracle tonics would come up in the conversation. I'm afraid I cannot divulge in the family recipes, you understand. But I can tell you that all of my ingredients were grown right here on this island. The soil is extremely rich, you see, so everything I grow is of the highest quality. Ah, uh, yes. Shaw tells me that some people consider my practices fake. Others in the medicinal community think I am running a scam, a hoax to entertain myself. <laughs> but have any of them cured lung cancer with a simple tonic? Were any of them able to help a child who was paralyzed in a car accident walk again? No. What I do may be considered unorthodox to some, but it helps people, and that is all I want to do. Yes, I suppose you could say I am passionate about my work. I have every reason to be. Those who seek to enter the medicinal world only to boost their own selfish image are not fit to be doctors, in my opinion. I am not doing this for the money. I am not doing this for the fame. 
I simply want to help people. I think... I think that's enough questions for tonight. We can finish your interview tomorrow before you leave. Good. I'll take my leave then. Sleep well. I understand it isn't a blogger's personality to be curious. I remind you, however, that this is my home, and I would prefer you not sneak around and explore. Please refrain from leaving your room tonight. Am I understood? Thank you. Good evening. Hello again, Shaw. Lady Alessandra, how was our guest doing? Asleep in his room. I slipped a little tonic into his drink at dinner tonight. So he should be out until morning. Oh, I see. Well, I've got another customer for you. Very well. Ma'am? Yes, you can approach now. Welcome to Isla Hoven. What is it you seek? Please. It's my baby. She won't stop coughing. And she has a fever. I've taken her to every doctor I can. But they can't find out the cause of it. I've spent thousands on different treatments, but nothing has worked. The last doctor I went to said that her organs are slowly shutting down. He only gave her another month. Please. Please save my baby. I'll do anything. I don't have much, but I brought five grand. It's all I have left to my name. Please. Won't you heal my baby? Calm yourself, my dear. May I see the baby? Oh my, you really are sick, aren't you, little one? Yes, I can feel how much pain you are in. Oh, poor thing. Please, tell me you can heal her. You're my only hope left. Please. I, I don't want her to die. She still has her entire life ahead of her. I want to see her grow up. I want to see her get married. I, I, I want... I want... I can heal her. You can? Yes, my dear. All I ask is that you stay here with Captain Shaw. I'll be back soon. Captain? Aye, my lady. See to this woman's payment, would you? I think one thousand dollars should be plenty. You, you don't want the whole five thousand? You'll need that money to care for your daughter. One thousand is quite enough. I... I don't know what to say. Uh, come back to the boat, ma'am. Lady Alessandra is going to take good care of your daughter. In the meantime, why don't I get you a spot of gin to calm those nerves of yours? Oh... Oh, I, I don't drink. Well, <laughs> what better time to start, eh? I come. It's a good brew. Yes, little one, I know it's a little scary down here. 
Most normal doctors don't have a secret passage that reads underground, do they? <laughs> well, I'm not what you would call a normal doctor. Don't worry, child. You're about to witness something truly beautiful. See now? Not so scary, right? Just a little cave with a pool in the center. See the way the water flows? It casts the most beautiful iridescent light on the walls, doesn't it? And do you hear those voices in the water, little one? If you look closely, you can see their spirits swirling the pool around. Yes, quite right. Better get down to business. Hmm. Where did I put that eyedropper? Ah, yes. Here it is. Now, this part is a little tricky. I don't want to give you too much. One drop should do it. There we are, little one. Good as new. Now, let's get you back to your... Oh, you? But, how did you... I gave you... You shouldn't be down here. Get back upstairs. Now. I am going to return this baby to her mother. After that... I think it's my turn to ask some questions. Hello, my little dollies. I'm Little Ragdoll, and I'm here to say thank you all for enjoying my content and helping my channel grow. I wanted to give a very special shout out to this week's Patreon plushies who have gone above and beyond to support me and help me create even more amazing content for you all. If you'd like to join my Patreon, you'll find the link on my profile as well as the link to my Discord server where you can chat with me and get to know the other amazing people in our community. Thank you again for allowing me to share my stories with you all. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of my weekly videos. And remember, stay safe, have fun, and I will see you in the next video.